In the previous video, we discussed one type of energy transfers, namely heat transfers. We said that energy could travel from a hot object to a cold object, and that three types of heat transfers exist, convection, conduction, and radiation. Another form of energy transfer is work. And there are only two types of energy transfers, heat and work. So if it's not heat, it must be work, and vice versa. So in this lecture, we're going to focus primarily on work. So from a physics perspective, what is work? From a physics perspective, if you want to move a box a distance t, or from a point x to a point y, you have to exert a force on that box over a distance t. And assuming the force is constant, you can find the work done by this formula. Work equals force times distance traveled. If the force isn't constant, you have to do a little bit of calculus, and you have to use the integral. Okay. Now, from a chemistry perspective, what is work? Well, when, we, when we're in chemistry, we basically want to work with atoms and molecules, and we say that a single molecule or an atom has some kinetic energy, translational energy. And collectively, the translational or kinetic energy of the entire system can do work. But now, it doesn't do work by acting over some distance, it does work by expansion, okay? So, expansion work is called PV work, okay? And you find the work done by multiplying the pressure when it's constant by the change in volume, okay? So this equation only holds when the pressure is constant. When the pressure isn't constant, we have to use the integral, okay? So there are many different examples that could be used to describe chemical work. But for the most part, people use two examples. One with balloons and the other one with pistons, okay? So how do balloons expand? Balloons expand because you blow in air. In other words, you blow in oxygen molecules uh, water vapor, you blow in carbon dioxide, you blow in nitrogen molecules, and so on. And the increase in the number of molecules increases the system's kinetic energy, collective kinetic energy, and that in turn pushes on the, on the walls of the balloon, and this push exerts a pressure or a force on the outside molecules, the surrounding molecules in the air, and this does work on those molecules, expanding the balloon and moving those molecules away. Okay? So, collectively, the molecules or the atoms within the system, within a stationary system, expand by doing work on the surrounding molecules. Okay? The same concept works for a piston. Okay? In a piston, at some constant pressure, you have some molecules floating around within this area, okay? And the atmosphere exerts a force on the piston downward. Now, what happens if, for example, you heat the system? If you heat the system, you increase the kinetic energy of the molecules inside here by increasing their speed, and this, in turn, will push against the piston. It will push against those molecules found in the air here, and it will do work on them, and it will expand the entire system. So once again, the collective kinetic energy of the system inside does work on the outside molecules, the surrounding molecules, okay? And that is how it expands. And when force or when pressure is constant, we can find the equation, we can find the work done on the surroundings by simply using the equation work equals for, uh, volume or change in volume times pressure. Okay? Now, how do we come up with this equation? Let's circle this equation that we keep on mentioning. Okay? So, work equals, t equals, um, Pressure times change in volume, right? So, we start with pressure. When we talk about chemistry and chemical systems, we always talk about pressure. And pressure is force per unit area, okay? Now, 
what happens if we just multiply this side by a and this side by a? Well, if we multiply this side by a, the a's cancel out, we get f. If we multiply this side by a, we get pa. Okay, so force is equal to pressure times area. Okay, now what happens if we multiply by distance, both sides by distance? We multiply this side by distance, we get force times distance. If we multiply this side by distance, we get pressure times area times distance. But remember that area times distance is simply the volume. That is, if we go back to our piston example, right, and the piston moves a certain distance, say D, right, then this area, A, times the distance D will give us this whole volume here, or the change in volume. Therefore, pressure times change in volume is equal to work. And that's how we derive this equation from pressure. Okay? And that's what work is in a chemical perspective, or, for, or from a chemical perspective. Now let's look at the graph of pressure versus volume when pressure is constant. Okay? What we see is pressure is the y-axis, the vertical axis, is constant, so it's the same throughout the entire uh, process. The volume, however, changes. It goes from some lower volume to some higher volume. Okay? The work, what the work is, is this. The pressure, which is constant, the pressure is the vertical side, this side, so that's pressure, times the change in volume, V2 or V final, minus V1, V initial, so this side, this is change in volume, so this side times this side gives us the work. So since this is a rectangle and the area of a rectangle is, is side times length, what we see, or side times width, what we see is that work is this shade region here. And this is actually work pressure times change in volume, okay? Now, if we want to find the work when pressure isn't constant, we could still do it, but then we have to use the integral over some area, okay? We could no longer use this equation because this equation assumes that pressure is constant throughout the experiment. But if it's not constant, we have to use calculus and we have to integrate it.